Uh, Savir, great game. Uh, obviously, I, but, but what's the takeaway? Obviously, you guys came up short. Uh, you're up 14, um, and they made a little run there in the middle. Uh, but uh, other, otherwise, it felt like you guys played really well. Um, yeah, it was, it was a good game. We played, we played, we had good spurts, um, good sequences of the game. Um, you know, we forced them to 22 turnovers, but we also had 20. Um, at the end of the day, it came down to one possession. Uh, it was 72, 89, I'm sorry, 82, 79 with a minute left. Um, dude hit a, hit a tough shot. So, um, we did some things that, you know, we put ourselves in that situation. Like you said, we were up and we were able to sustain that lead. But also, they went up um, probably about nine or 11. We also brought it back. So it was a back and forth game. Um, it was a tough loss, but we got to, you know, we got to, we got to, we got to work on some stuff. Severe, obviously, you guys had a very tough uh, matchup the first time around in Tuscaloosa. Um, do you take something positive out of, you know, kind of uh, how well you played against them that, that, that you led and you were, you know, like you mentioned, that was a three point game there before they hit the three, or is it more about, you know, not getting enough stops when you need it in the second half? Yeah, I'm not a moral, moral victory kind of dude. I'm always a win or lose. You either win a game or you lose the game. Um, we did great things in the game to, to put ourselves in position to win. But at the end of the day, we did not win the game. So I don't, I feel, feel the same way we, we lost um, and I, and I want to win, so. All right, let's have Anthony Dasher and then Mike Griffith. All right, let's have Mike Griffith. Uh, yes, Sabir, I guess I would just ask you the, uh, I mean, the obvious stat, two obvious stats, one of the rebounds, the size issue, but, but the free throws, I mean, the 13 to 23, <clears throat> how much of that is just, I mean, neither team shot particularly well, how much of that is just the team being exhausted? It looked like there was a lot of chasing around, a lot of defense being played. Would you would you attribute some of that to to the energy that was being expended on both for both teams today? Um, yeah, I mean, we came out defensively with some intensity. I'm sure that caught caught them by surprise. Um, but then again, they also had to expend some energy for that, for, you know, to come back in the second half. So, um, you know, it was just a game where none of you know. We didn't make free throws, they didn't make free throws, but uh, I think we needed our free throws a little bit more, especially since um, I don't think we, we shot the three as necessarily well as they did. I think they went eight for 10 in the second half. Um, so, I mean, it was tough. All right, let's have Ryan Curley and then Charles Odom. Hey, Severe, how do you feel about uh, where this team's at um, going into the tournament after uh, two losses to end the regular season? Um, first thing, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's it's severe. It's not severe. It's I severe. no, I, I I meant to correct myself. I, I realized I got it wrong. I apologize. But um, you know, it's, it's, it's disappointing a little bit. Um, but like I said, we can take some good things and we play some good basketball at spurts. But um, I, I think I think you know, it, it's tough. You know, we're trying to win this game. I'm um, to go into the SEC tournament, SEC tournament with a win. But um, like like I mean, it's, it's one of the best leagues in the country. So you always got to focus on the next game. Um, you got, you got to break down the film, see what you did wrong, learn from it, come to practice the next day with the mindset to get better and focus on the next day, um, focus on the next game the next day. Charles Odom, do you have a question? All right, let's go with Davis Baker and then Tori Heck. Uh, hey, Savir, what was the impact of the increased student attendance today? I, I noticed you guys jumped out to that uh, early lead. Was Could you hear him? Yeah, I was gonna um, shout them out at the end of the, at the end, but um, like I said, I always want to give a big thanks to the students and everyone who came to the game. Um, it was much appreciated. We felt your energy. Um, we kind of fed off that energy. Um, you know, it was always great to have Dog Nation knowing that they're gonna have your back. Um, so we definitely felt it, and hopefully, sometime soon in the near future, we can have everyone at the stag again. <laughs> Hey, Xavier, you mentioned the turnovers in the defense a little bit. How much do you think the defense came into play in the outcome of today's game versus just the scoring and that kind of stuff? It seemed like a very defensive heavy game, especially in that first half. Yeah, definitely. Um, we knew that Alabama could really score the ball. Um, I know we can we can score the ball as well, but um, they, uh, their thing is, you know, moving the ball, making you rotate, making that one more pass. And you know, for us, is be able to control the dribble, keep the guy in front of us and not and not have to rotate, make them take tough shots. And, um, and since we jumped out to an early lead, they also had to play some defense too, so I wouldn't get away from them too much. 
Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a defensive game. It was an intense game. But um, with the second half, the scoring kind of picked up a little bit. And uh, we weren't able to get some steps up when we needed and weren't able to execute when we needed. All right, and with the last question, Charles Odom. Javier, I apologize if you've already uh, commented on this, but uh, what was the um, what was the feeling about the, your defensive improvement as a team today? Um, I like where we I liked where we were. I mean, obviously, to force twenty two turnovers, that's always a plus. Um, but we got out rebounded. Um, that's not something that I don't think we typically get out rebounded by that that, that by that margin. I think they were plus thirteen or fourteen. Um, so that's something we got to clean up. And also to the rebound standpoint, um, we only has seven offensive rebounds, which might be a season low. So um, there's some things that we did good defensively, especially in the first half, making them take tough shots, um, you know, forcing 22 turnovers. Um, but also in that stretch where they kind of came back, we had a little defensive lapses. So the, the main thing is being consistent on defense throughout the whole game, um, keeping our guy in front, um, making them take challenge twos and, and rebounding the ball, finish the possession with a rebound. All right, thanks so much, Xavier. Thank you. Up next, we're gonna have Katie Johnson. All righty, let's start first with Charles Odom and then Chip Towers. Can you can you talk about the um, the ebb and flow of this game? Um, what uh, what do you guys take positive out of your continuing to come back in in the second half when it appeared that Alabama was trying to pull away? Uh, we was down quite a bit, probably about six or eight, but at the one minute mark, probably at the two minute mark, but we kept fighting and we got it down to about three or four. So let's keep fighting, playing together and. Being together the whole time, which we need to improve on a little bit. That's what it probably would have got us to win at the end. But a few mistakes just came down to an Alabama execute at the end. Good to see you, KD. Uh, apparently, Bama brings out the best in you. Uh, it's a, you're probably in a great position to answer this. And I know you guys got games left to play uh, ahead of you. But, you know, you're leading a, a – a top five team in the country by 14. Uh, obviously, you didn't get the win going, but what, what, what is, how does this make you feel about the future? You know, you, the other guys coming back about the potential of this team. Oh, I feel real great about uh, the future with us. You know, the guys coming back, us playing together this year, and, you know, I didn't get to play the half of the season. So, me playing the second half, uh, I think we're getting a little closer. Uh, later on in the season. So I see it's, it's, it's a great time. We have a great season next year. Okay, let's have Mark Weiser and then Mike Griffith. Hey, KD, I, I got um, kind of a two-part question. How important was it for you to kind of get in that groove, uh, hitting the threes since Bama was uh, really stroking it? And then also, uh, you know, I guess it was a three-point game um, and, and they hit a three. It was uh, we trying to help on that play and, and got back a little later? Or do you think you contested it like you wanted? Uh, the threes was... A, a good part of the game, but at the end, uh, I was trying to help my, uh, I think it was Justin probably uh, on the drive and I tried to get back as fast as I could and he just made a tough shot. Thank you. Uh, hey, hey kid, Katie, I guess I would just ask you about, um, you know, where, where you see yourself taking your game. Obviously you're an explosive guy that gets to the rim that can hit the three, but where, where do you see your game picking up and improving? What haven't we seen from you yet? Uh, me playing the whole game, you know, some games I have spurts and fall off in the second half. So me trying to get to play the whole game and staying consistent with myself. So I think I'm improving on that. Okay, and the last two questions, let's have Jed May and Palmer Toms. Hey, KD, um, I know Coach Crean always talks about, you know, getting three stops in a row to, to keep momentum going. That, that didn't seem to happen very much in the second half. Just what allowed Alabama to have that much success after halftime? And what does that do to a team's psyche when, you know, every day, every time down the court, Alabama's putting the ball in the bucket? Um, we had a great first half with playing against Alabama offense. And I, I guess the second half, we had a few mistakes coming down and us getting those stops. Was, we just couldn't get to it, I guess. Yeah, KD, how do you feel about where this team is at headed into the SEC tournament next week? 
Oh, I feel great. You know, we had a good game. I mean, that's the that's the team that won the league. So us losing by four or five, uh, way better than the game that we played them last time. You know, so us closing that deficit. You know, we uh, closing out the the game with that with that with the first half we had. I think if we play like that the whole game, we'll have a a better game. But I feel good about the SEC tournament. All right, thanks so much, Katie. And we will be joined by Coach Crean shortly. Okay. All righty, now we are joined by Coach Crean. Let's start first with Mike Griffith and then Charles Odom. Uh, yeah, Coach, I guess I'd just ask you for your, your thoughts and reaction. Well, as I said to this team, um, there were a lot of different things inside of the game, but under a minute, it's 82 79. Um, and they hit a tough three, you know, a challenge three to put it up. And um, we self inflicted a few things, you know, with our missed free throws, um, with our not guarding the ball as well. Um, we didn't get the guard rebounds that we need to get, you know, in a game like this. Um, but we, we, we competed heavily. I mean, we, 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 we followed the game plan. We got better this week. We were bringing that to life and, um, that 15 to two run hurt us obviously uh, on the second half, but it never felt like we wouldn't come back in it either. And, um, but, but the margin for error with our lack of size, uh, and sometimes our lack of shooting is always going to be tough and it, and it gets, it gets lower when you're playing against a team like that. And, and one reason they're so good is they make you pay for your mistakes. You know, not every team makes you pay for their mistakes. They make you pay if you make a mistake, but there were many, many times that, that uh, uh, we were, we were doing exactly what we had prepared for, could do, wanted to do. And um, uh, with all that being said, I mean, it's right there. It's 82 79. And uh, they hit a tough shot that, that shot caroms off. Maybe we're going the other way and it's another story, but um, that's what I'm disappointed for these guys because the week of work that they put in, and it wasn't just the week of work for this game. It's the week of work to get ready for next week as well. But I wanted to really, really wanted them to have a big win like this. Um, and we just didn't get it. We just fell a little bit short, but uh, appreciate the fans, the students, the way they came. I wanted it for these students too. Again, the year that, that everybody's had and it, it, it close to home in so many areas, but with, with the Georgia kid, the Georgia students, uh, being so limited, being able to come in, I was really, really appreciative of, of Josh Brooks doing this and, and President Moorhead uh, supporting it and the work John Bateman did. And I um, appreciate all of that. It was a tremendous atmosphere. But um, we, just have to, we just have to continue to work on controlling the things that we can control. Uh, we shoot free throws every day. We shot them for probably 20 minutes this morning. And there's no question we can make free throws. We have made free throws. But in a game like this, you got to have every every one of them that you can get, and we just didn't get them. The challenge three that you uh, referenced that was uh, so important uh, came from Ellis uh, off the bench. Did um, does that just kind of uh, um, show the the depth that that makes them so strong? Yeah, I think so. They have they have tremendous depth. I, I think that's the real separator in this league this year. You know, when you look at the upper echelon of teams, is is that there's very little drop off on when, when you go to the bench. I mean, Keon Ellis would be starting for quite a few teams in this league. And uh, again, I've said this so many times, Nate has done a fantastic job of taking the players that he inherited, um, making them better and, and um, uh, recruiting around it. And he's got, I said this to uh, our staff, uh, he's got Herb Jones and nobody else does. That's what it would be almost like. Can you imagine Nick Claxton you know, being in his senior year, you know, improving the way he did the first year, controlling the game. Herb Jones can control the game defensively and he can control it with his driving. It's a very unique player. And, uh, um, you know, we had that with Nick a couple of years ago. So I know that the impact of having a guy like that just changes the game in so many ways, you know, and then the, their ability to shoot the ball and they really don't bring in anybody off the bench that can't shoot the ball. And that you have to honor those guys. And uh, with the exception of a couple of them, you know, a couple of the bigger kids, but you have to honor those guys and be where they're at. And if you can't control the dribble, it puts you in a real disadvantage. All right, up next, let's have Chip Towers and then Mark Weiser. 
And you kind of touched on it there, Tom. Uh, you, you look at the biggest difference in the game, I guess, is they go eight for 10 from three in the second half and, and two for 12 in the first half. And I remember you talking pregame about, you know, hey, those threes better be contested this time. And and they were, and uh, y'all were doing a good job defensively. What 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 changed? Just them making them? Uh, you know? I think that, uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit not controlling the dribble as good as we needed to. I would say that. Um it, that 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 was the thing. We 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 zoned a little bit. We lost uh, lost them a couple of times. They they got a three in the corner, which we were okay with, because when you're when you're in a one three one zone, I mean that's the one shot that is going to be the hardest to contest. But you can live with that. But there were some other things. They were just getting a little bit too much penetration. But uh, for the most part, we stayed with our man. We challenged the shots. But when you when you have when the ball's coming down the 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 the, the pike there, and you got to over help, and they can kick it out. Um, that they're a unique team because they he really doesn't, with the exception of one or two guys, and it's very rare that it's one or two guys in that in that team can't make threes consistent. And and um, uh, I, I I know that feeling. We had that at Indiana like that. I mean, it's it's a really really great feeling when you the whole court is spaced and there's really not a lot the defense can do about it when the ball's moving like that. And they've got that right now. But that's why controlling the dribble is so important. Tom, uh, Savir uh, mentioned that you know, obviously there, there's no moral victories, but but as you mentioned, you guys uh, competed heavily. Is I guess the words you used. I mean, is that a tough balance to to take some encouraging signs from uh, competing heavily? Uh, uh, no, no. I mean, it, it's um, um, it, it it's always hard when you know your team is a better shooting team than what they're showing, especially at the foul line, right? Like that's that's tough. Um. Guarding the ball, it, it, you know, we, we needed to get that 15 to two run stop or, or run stopped a little quicker, um, that type of stuff. But no, we practiced, we had a great week of practice. I mean, there wasn't a doubt in my mind we were locked in ready to go in this game and <laughs> not a doubt in my mind. But the practices weren't just to prepare for this game. When you've got a week like that, you've got to get ready, you know, for, for even though you know who you're going to play, you've got to make sure that you're adding and getting better and that you see some sustainable growth in the, in the stuff that you're working on so that you can take it with you next week. So uh, I'm disappointed in the loss or no doubt about that, but I'm not discouraged in our effort or our work. And uh, like I said, I mean, it's uh, both teams turned it over. Both teams made mistakes. They shot it better in the second half than we did, but it's 79, 82 under a minute to go. Thanks. All righty. Let's have Jed May and then Tori Heck. Coach, uh, you mentioned the three-point shooting a minute ago. They've got, you know, every guy on the court, it seems like, that can shoot threes. Just how tough of a matchup is it for a team like yours when, you know, you've got to guard all those guys on the perimeter, but you also, you know, don't have, I guess, that huge rim protector, you know, to destroy things up inside as well? Uh, that makes a difference. But, again, it, it really comes down to the one-on-one -on -one battle of guarding the ball, the way they play, right? Because they're trying to isolate you, drive, get to the rim, create mismatches, and get you to over help so they can kick it out. And um, uh, they play a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball to try to get you in that rotation. And so you've got to make sure that you're controlling the dribble the best that you can and not get into the rotation because they pass it to the next guy and they knock it down. But certainly it's different when you have, when you have better rim protection. We, we missed a lot of close shots today. I think I'm going to be um, – when I see how many layups we missed, I'll really be that, – that'll probably hit. I mean, we had plays at the rim um, that, that we just didn't get finished. And um, I wish we'd had more. You know, in a game like this, you've got to have more than seven offensive rebounds. But uh, there's no question. I mean, we, they, they, they've got tremendous size. They've got skill. They've got depth. And um, that, that creates issues. Coach, this game started out scoreless for the first two and a half minutes. Do you feel like that really set the – tone for the defensive intensity for the rest of the night say that first part again the game started you guys it was scoreless for the first couple of minutes there um Where, do you feel the, like that kind at, of at the beginning of the game right, right at the beginning yes sir uh yeah we were aggressive play. i don't ever worry about that i mean you just want to come out and be established uh establish the defense establish that you're going to drive the ball and and not come out and settle for threes in the first four minutes of uh, probably their last seven games, they were averaging, I think, five threes, you know, inside of the, before the first TV timeout and um, with a high of seven. So, I mean, it, that's, they're going to come out and shoot the ball. So you've got to come out and you've got to establish you're going to guard the ball. And so you don't have to get into an overhelp situation. And I thought we did that. 
All right, last question. Let's go with Ryan Curley. Hey, Coach. The Alabama controlled the boards in the second half. I think the rebounding margin was one at halftime, and it was closer to 12 or 13 in the second half. How much do you think that had to do with with their play in the second half? We didn't get enough guard rebounds. I mean, that, 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 that's, that, that's what that is. You know, we didn't, we, you've got to have the guards coming in and block out better with your bigs and the guards get the rebounds. And that's the number I look at, you know, is the difference on who plays the one, two and three for them versus who plays the one, two and three for us. And that, that was the difference. So um, they should rebound like that. They're big. I mean, they're, they're athletic. I mean, they're really big. And, um, but we've got to be able to get in there and get more offensive boards, but we certainly have got to be able to have our guards come in and do a better job of defensive rebound. All right. Thanks so much, coach. Thank you. And we will have a transcript to you guys shortly.